एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू एन यू वीडियो ऑन डेंटिस्ट्री एंड मोर सो टुडे इज टॉपिक इज अबाउट थियोरीज ऑफ ग्रोथ सो देयर आर वेरियस थियोरीज ऑफ ग्रोथ ऑफ हेड एंड फेस रीजन इन ऑर्थोडोंटिक्स द थियोरीज आर जेनेटिक थियोरी स्ट्रक्चरल थियोरी कार्टिलेजियस थियोरी एंड फंक्शनल मैट्रिक्स थियोरी वन ऑफ द फर्स्ट थियोरी is genetic theory so it was given by alan g brody in 1950s according to this theory the growth is controlled by genes as the name suggests the control of growth is on genes so it is more of a assumed theory than a proven one there is no proof for this theory it is more of an assumption so according to this theory head and face grew from growth centers so we know growth centers so the head and face it grows from growth centers the point is under strict genetic control so there is a strict genetic control upon the growth of head and face so primarily genetic control determines the initial features later the secondarily the local feedback and inner communication happens between cells and tissues that is a process of growth primarily the genetic control determine the basic initial features then the local feedback and inner communication that is a further growth that is happening between cells and tissues so this theory is not accepted at all because this theory can't explain the role of epigenetic and environmental factors so this theory is later replaced by many theory this is one of the first theory because uh, because of this uh, genes involvement a part of this was correct but it cannot prove or it cannot explain the entire growth of head and face region because it is not considering the epigenetic and environmental factors of growth which has significant roles in the growth and development of head and face because genetics control only certain features no complete influence on the head and face region suppose if genetic theory is true we could predict the feature of a children from the cephalogram of parents if this is to be true we can easily predict what happens or what would happen for children from the cephalograms of parents but this is not at all possible to an extent we can say that this might happen but there is no complete assurance that this would happen because there is always involvement of epigenetic and other environmental factors and other growth factors but there is a slight uh favoring side the significance of development of malocclusion because uh, mostly the occlusal similarities we can see which runs in families so malocclusion will be of a uh, little significance under genetic theory so genetic theories most of the things are against the genetic thing genetic theory so only few things so that like malocclusion um some similarities which can uh, caused by the genetics because genetics is there definitely genetics has a role but we cannot explain the entire growth of head and face by the genetical theory so a part of genetic theory can be accepted but not completely so this is the first theory that is genetic theory given by alan g brody complete control of genes primary it has the initial uh, control on basic features and there is cells and tissues inner communication and local feedback there is no uh, emphasizing on epigenetic and en environmental factors so it rejected a little uh, uh influence on the malocclusion because there is occlusal similarities in the family so now let's move on to the sutural theory